Hi, and welcome back to the shop. Today's video is going to be about the G0704, G0759 Y-axis extension. So the assumption here today is that you're watching this video because you bought yourself either a G0704, G0759, or any of the many clones out there. Um, Chinese machines, buy the, buy the machine, one of the first upgrades a lot of folks make is to buy the power feed. Right, so power feed's awesome. Uh, along the x-axis. Mine's being a little noisy today, just warming up. Anyway, we get this power feed. It's great. We bolt it on there. That takes half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, depending on how mechanically adept you are. One of the first things you're going to notice is that the limit switch cover interferes with the y-axis travel. So I'll bring you in close here and show you what I'm talking about. So you can see here now that I brought you in a little closer, I have made myself an extension for my Y-axis handle. Now you can see pretty clearly I still gave myself uh, a little extra than I actually needed so that I wasn't busting my knuckles on anything. Um, but if this extension wasn't here, I would have lost about two and a half to three inches of Y-axis travel. And on a machine that doesn't already have a lot of travel, losing a third of your Y-axis travel uh, just to have power feed is just completely unacceptable for most folks, including myself. So I went ahead, very first thing I did after I bolted this on and discovered the problem, um, I made myself a new shaft, a collar, uh, just out of aluminum here, and then I bolted it all together. So I'm going to break this down uh, just to show you in the most simple, simple way possible. Um, what I needed to do in order to get my travel back. Installation, pretty simple. We're just going to break this loose. Well, I really tighten this on there. All right, so stock, here is our keyway that corresponds with our Y-axis handle. There are two little keyways. Itty bitty guys, uh, do not lose these when you remove them from the unit. So all I did was uh, cut corresponding threads, uh, both in <coughs> female and male on this shaft here. And I'm going to get you some measurements. All right, so with the approximators here, uh, I went oh, just a little bit less than three and a half inches. I went ahead and uh, used all the same keys. All right, so here is my aluminum spacer. All I did was match the geometry um, of the of the handle itself. So I don't know how well the camera is going to pick this up so that all of the force is transmitted through the thrust uh, washing so there, or thrust bearing. So there's just a little bit of a space here. Um, so it's not constantly rubbing on this uh, piece of cast iron. Cut myself a very, very ugly keyway by hand. Perfectly functional. Um, drop in my key, slam this all together, tighten it up, and I got all of my travel back. So I think this is uh, pretty much a must-have modification if you decide to go with the factory Grizzly um, power feed. So there's no reason that Grizzly needed to make it this way. I think they just wanted to make this power feed unit fit as many units as humanly possible and they just don't care what, you're, what you give up in order to install it. So instead of purposely engineering a product uh, that would bolt onto the machine and leave all of its functions and capability exactly the same. They just assume that the buyer of one of these kits is going to have the necessary skills in order to install this. Um, so I went ahead and I red Loctite did my threaded um, shaft extension on. I definitely could have pinned this shaft directly 
uh, on as an extension. I chose not to because uh, this was just a rough and dirty, you know, one hour project. But um, yeah, I mean, if, if this was going to be permanent and I was never going to convert to CNC, absolutely, I would have pulled this uh, shaft, the Y axis screw. Uh, out of the machine. I would have gone over to the drill press, drilled through, and just pinned them together. I don't think it's necessary. There's so little force on this. And then if you do match up your um, Allen screws kind of in the correct locations, um, there's there's no chance this is ever going to turn. So with the keyway for the spacer riding on the original Y-axis screw, and then my set screws um, on this shaft, I, d I don't think I have any issues. Uh, I'd never have to worry about it coming off. So I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this, and I'll give you a, a close-up once more. And I think that's going to be about it. One more quick thing to note. Um, the easiest way to install this, to tap this on, is just go ahead and get yourself a deep well socket. Give it a little tappy tap tap. You might have to play with it a little bit to make sure the Y-axis screw is set in there correctly. All right, well, there we have it, guys. Really simple, uh, easy modification. I'd say, depending on your skill level, this might take somewhere between half an hour and two hours. Uh, just fab this up, throw it on here. A huge improvement. I would say it's borderline mandatory, especially if, or if you get a power feed where the limit switch um, setup is going to interfere with your uh, Y-axis travel or the handles in particular. If you're going CNC, uh, you know, you don't need this. You're going to have... A different setup. Um, your limit switches probably aren't going to be set up this way, um, but just keep it in mind. Super easy. I hope this helps somebody else out there. I didn't see a whole lot on the web um, as far as a workaround on this solution, so I thought I would kind of document it here and show how well it works and how easy of a project is. I really appreciate you guys stopping by the shop. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, let me know. Uh, if you'd like more little modification projects, um, let me know down in the comments below and I'll try to tackle them. I think next I will go over the build for my spindle stop. Thanks guys. Have a good night.